All right, so let's talk about some of the ways that people get caught for BAH fraud, not to give them reasons to do it or ways to go around it, but just some just some common knowledge here of things that, that people are doing so that you know we can pay attention to that. Well, once a file gets flagged, there's a lot of different ways a file can get flagged. Again, you can do an automatic audit by DFAS up in Indianapolis who pays, and that there's all sorts of flags that can hit an account, but basically an algorithm, a fraud algorithm that you want. Think about a credit card, right? Think about if you're trying to use your credit card and now your credit card gets used at a gas, let's say you live in Tampa, Florida, and all of a sudden your credit card gets used at a gas station in Missouri, and you've never been to Missouri, and the credit card company has no record of you ever going there, it's probably gonna flag that, especially if you don't travel a lot. If your card all of a sudden gets used for some online transaction in, in Bangladesh, it's gonna get flagged if you don't travel to Bangladesh a lot. So if you think about the credit card algorithms that they have to prevent fraud, well, the military is a multi-billion dollar industry and paying all these service members, again, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. If you don't think there's fraud protections, you're absolutely wrong or you're just naive, there are. And the best analogy, again, is that is the way credit card fraud is handled. And so if DFS, the defense, you know, defense Finance Accounting System, if they're the ones that pay you, if they notice that you are living in, you know, Korea, your spouse is getting paid in New York BAH, but now they're getting you know, services for medical services, where your children are enrolled in school, um, where, the, where they're shopping at the commissary, that's all at a different location, that's gonna flag an account. And these systems actually do pretty good of talking to each other. So you have DBIDS, which is the Defense Biometric Identification System for when you scan onto, onto base. You have commissary that can be tracked that way. You have, um, you know, the child care that's tracked that way. You have DEERS, which is the, the health care. And so there's pretty good ways. These to are all computer systems that you're talking about. These are about, all computer right systems, there. right? These are all okay. computerized systems that triangulate that, that can show where someone's whereabouts are. And so if you get flagged, again, then that's going to get you're going to have an initial audit that's done. If it's up, if it's up at DFAS level, it'd be initial audit. And if they feel feel there's fraud, they'll send it down to the local CID, NCIS, or OSI office. That's if it gets flagged. Now from there, they're going to turn your life inside out because they're now investigating, and rightfully so. It can be a 30,000 and I've seen, the biggest I've seen is half a million dollar fraud. So these can get very, very big, very, very quickly, especially if this fraud goes on for years. I and mean, I've seen this five, 10, I think the longest I have is a sailor's entire career. They were collecting housing allowance they weren't entitled to. So it adds up very quickly. So what they're gonna then do is start to figure out where's the service member getting paid and you know, for their spouse. And they're gonna do what's called an RFA, a request for assistance and have someone go do a knock and talk. So if you're claiming that your spouse lives in, you know, in Greenwich Village in New York, they're actually going to send an agent out to the house and they're going to go physically, to that location right? physically. They will send an agent physically to that location and try to determine who lives there. Now, if, you're, if your spouse opens the door and lives there and they do a check, hey, maybe they're wrong, but usually it doesn't happen. Usually I've had, you know, I've had where someone will show up and say, nope, no one's ever lived here. I've lived here for 30 years. This is my address. And probably the funniest one ever was I had someone list a strip club as the address in San Francisco. And so this is true. You can't make this up. They listed a strip club in San Francisco, right outside of San Francisco. And when the agents went there, it was a strip club. And the joke was, hey, he was there so much, he called it home, right? <laughs> but that was, that's what we call a bad fact, right? Um, he's living at the strip club. Um, that was a one-off, but that was kind of hey, He was trying to be an honest fraudster. It's right. He was there so much, he <laughs> called it home, right? And uh, and so that was the one. But typically, they'll send someone out to the house and realize that this person's never lived here. Then they'll pull the records from the house, whether it's a lease, and they'll show that, that person never leased that property. Or if it's a purchase, they'll pull the deed. And n not that that's, that's probably enough right there, but then they'll look at where your kids go to school and where your children go to school. And if they're enrolled in school, they'll get the, the, the enrollment records for your kids. They'll pull your, they'll, they'll subpoena your credit card information for your spouse. And these credit card companies, and if it's USAA or Navy Fed, they're gonna have to comply with those subpoenas. And they're gonna see that you're using your debit card at 7-Eleven and Taco Bell in Mobile, Alabama, but the entire time you've never used it mm, in New York. Yeah. So that's more times yeah. they can triangulate, hey, this person was never in New York. Right. They're going it just to go sounds like it's super easy. It's super once, easy. If once you're and, flagged, it's really easy it, to find it, evidence against you. Yeah. Then they get flight records. I mean, there's the amount of records that can triangulate where a person is in the world we live in is just extraordinary. Right. And then yeah. once they do, they'll do all of this. And you'll never even know your, you'll, you'll never even know about it. Then they'll call the service member in and advise them of their rights. And at that point in time, just 
don't make a statement at that point in time. Like, just lawyer up, invoke your rights, and let them we'll deal with it. Because if you get brought in, they'll read you on larceny. Then they'll start saying, oh, you'll say, of course my wife lives in New York. I mean, she loves New York. I mean, she's a, a huge Yankees fan, right? And then they'll start saying, well, how come the lease she's at shows that she's never been there? The deed shows she's never been there. Her credit, and they'll start putting all of this information, and then the service member ends up confessing, then you're screwed. Right. And then mm -hmm. it's just a matter of damage limitation. So once you get flagged, it is so easy to triangulate where your spouse is or is not where you're collecting it. That's why these cases, uh, most of them end up in, in guilty pleas. Sometimes they go to trial and other times you have you have cases where, again, maybe you didn't know where your spouse was at. And that becomes really kind of unique if you have your spouse abandoned you or she, you know, she she absconded from you. If you're involved in BAH fraud, you need to call my office immediately and do a consultation. You can reach us at area code 813-669-3500. Please get on my calendar. We'll schedule a full evaluation of your case. It will be in complete confidence, and we'll come up with a plan for how to deal with your situation.